How are we going today, Minasan? My name is Rakan, and welcome back to another Bayonetta 3 video. We touched up on these milfs in the three previous videos, so don't worry, we're going to explain the mysterious life forms, the possible hidden masterminds, puppeteering them, and more intricate details within the trailer. I'm going to be uploading as much as I can, breaking down the epicenter of this Bayonetta 3 trailer, so make sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video, and turn on post notifications so you do not miss your daily dose of Bayonetta 3 content. I have a huge bombshell that I believe would be a cool story plot at the end of this video, but you'll have to understand a few details first before you can comprehend the final conclusion. I have to thank a lot of people for putting forward that this looked very similar to Sanskrit, one of the official languages of India. So shout out to GamerMD, Baremi Champi, The Nameless One, Vidua, Learning B, Jervi Lopez, and Michael Hernandez. You guys are the real MVPs. This is the first time an enemy incorporated a language of our humanity. Angels were of Enochian, demons were of Infernal, and chaos beings that of Noatan, even though there was only one of them. I do have a feeling though that this is not entirely Sanskrit and a mixture of other languages. But by all means, if anyone can figure out what this text means, please let us know in the comments below. However, it could be the language of extraterrestrials in the Beoverse, so I'm still not ruling out that possibility, and I'll dive into that alien possibility in just a sec. They are not affected by the military, so they are at least an Avengers level threat or above. There are some people claiming them to be yokai or fairies, and again, I'm not ruling out those possibilities, I am just going to present my findings from the trailer. I also want to point out here that that there is a Sapentia-like creature, even bigger than Sapentia itself, possibly rivaling the mothership that we saw in the records of time. The patterns on the life forms are what are interesting. They are so similar to the Blade Master's sword at the very end. Now, if we were to draw the parallel between the first timeline and the second timeline, and that this Blade Master is connected to the life forms, this would likely be John. Hear me out. In the first timeline, our John initially sided, quote unquote, with the angels, while it's possible that the second timeline's John is either on the side of these mysterious life forms or is trying to get rid of them from the inside out. From these small humanoid milfs to now this thick ass boy, it goes to show that there must be a bigger baddie at play puppeteering these, just like how Jubelius and Sheba were to theirs. Well, more so Jubelius. There is evidence of the warped space around Sereza and Gamora, so that brought me to three conclusions. Either this is Sereza's absolute pressure of her magic, the second Armageddon and how the world is going to sh**, or this is the magic of that huge milf. I am going to go to the conclusion of these higher life forms forms having the ability or passive ability to warp space, since no other enemy in Bayonetta has been able to. I know Jubelius and Asa can change the space around them, but bending the fabric of space itself is something new. Maybe there is a god of Purgatorio, if there even is one, can, since that'll be its specialty that these life forms adopted. Or maybe this is just the way the chapter environment is played. <laughs> Lamau. The first initial response was that they were extraterrestrials or aliens. Well, one, because they looked like them, and two, they have been confirmed to not either be angels or demons. The possibility that they could be aliens isn't too far-fetched. Nier Automata did this as their backstory, but I feel that it'd be something so new to the Bayonetta franchise since we're so used to celestial or mythological beings rather than that of science. Extraterrestrial life forms are evident in the Bayova since Radan once used Yagyu to save a planet from devastation, or that the Bazillion come from a different, more advanced civilization. So the fact that they could be aliens is possible, but I feel it would be too much of a cliche as of now, and they have a predictable sort of ending. I think the fact that they confirmed it to be neither angels nor demons, they are directing us to a certain direction. But I just gotta say, the neon holographic blue does resemble that of Lopta, and as much as I won't mind it, it would be quite a disappointment if they went with the it was Lopta all along trope in Bayonetta 3, because it's kind of like a- oh. Okay, so it may be a little sad if they do go along with that. I feel his arc is very saturated and overused by the time they even revealed him to be possessing Father Balder all along. I don't think Lopter is the big baddie, the final antagonist of Bayonetta 3. The only way I would love for Lopter to return is to actually reveal he was preparing for a bigger threat, and his mission was to return the eyes of the world, so in a sort of flashback shonen scene where they just show his head as a freeze frame and reveal he foresaw the antagonist in Bayonetta 3, and he wasn't just trying to enslave humanity all over again. This was the basis of our Lilith theory in episode 50, where Lopter was preparing to take down Lilith until our Bayonetta and Baldur stopped him. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> 
So yeah, of course, there must be someone puppeteering these MILFs on the basis that there is a human script, evident in their ribbons, and the speculation about the Perseus theory. So if you missed out on that in our first video, you can check that out in the pinned comment below. But in summary, the Perseus theory comes from the cafe signs. Perseus was a Greek mythological hero who slayed Gorgon Medusa, and is also the son of Zeus. He is also known for rescuing the Ethiopian princess Andromeda, which kind of draws parallel to this Reza and the person at the end. We saw a neon green flame, which if you want to link it back to the Perseus theory, is the same color as Gorgon Medusa or in pop culture. So if we were able to interpret it in Bayonetta 3, Perseus would be Sereza or us, while Gorgon Medusa is whoever is controlling these monsters. I don't think it's literally Gorgon Medusa because we already have Hydra and Medusa being the mastermind seems a little bit too random. Actually, the whole premise of my Bayonetta 3 theories is random, but the allegory of Perseus slaying Medusa will be the same concept to this Sereza or whoever we are going to be using. They seem to form out of nothing and have some sort of fusion going on with the trapped souls. And the reason I say souls is because of their humanoid structure, like that of John in Bayonetta 2. It would seem like the bigger ones are that of higher sphere MILFs, while the smaller ones are that of the lower sphere, obviously. I'm sure a lot of you know by now, but the MILFs drop these green charms called Magatama, which are Japanese charms that have been used for over 1,600 years. One interpretation is that the Magatama represents the overlapping shapes of the sun and the moon, symbolizing people's worship of the great universe. So that's a massive confirmation and a link to the Blood Moon and even the second Armageddon that we theorized all those years ago. These shapes are also represented in the Tomoe on Radan's coat as an emblem, which is actually a Japanese inspired coat. A year ago, we actually predicted Bayonetta 3 will be set or at least have one chapter set in Japan and oh my god, the Radan attire theory came in handy. Personally, if the Radan of the second timeline is on our side, I think there would be a scene where he would hold these in his hand and even looking at his old coats. I don't think he's directly connected to the antagonist, I feel it's more fitting that he is the Gojo of Bayonetta, being the one who is just on the sidelines watching. But it could be that this game is where we finally get to see either our Radan or the second timeline Radan go all out canonically. So am I thinking our Radan or the second timeline Radan is behind any of this? No, just that he'll know what these artifacts are and possibly warn Bayonetta or our Bayonetta that some sort of carnage is coming. Heaven and hell are gonna go straight for each other's throats. So we know that the second Armageddon has likely occurred with the imbalance of the right eye missing and the hint of the Magatamas. Here is what I think once and for all who they really are. My biggest theory and one I think is very likely and fitting personally is that these beings appear to be the souls that we need to exercise out of this world. So again, where are my Jujutsu Kaisen fans at? Why I say this is because we are individually exercising them in the torture attacks and that smaller souls do get ripped out the more damage they incur. They exist in the second time Line because we gotta remember angels and demons are basically no threat to anyone anymore. And in Bayonetta 1, we found out that it's possible that humans either turn into angels or demons depending on how they were in life or their allegiance. Just to expand upon in that first video, those souls of people that have died cannot go anywhere due to the second Armageddon combining the worlds. So where do the souls end up? on Earth. So either these MILFs are fusing by themselves, or what I feel is a cool theory, a human who's taken advantage of this fallout of the Armageddon and using the souls as weapons. It's very likely that there is a mastermind puppeteering these MILFs, possibly to try and play around with our Bayonetta. I'm thinking someone trying to lure Bayonetta into timeline jumping, but you never know. Realistically speaking, this mastermind of whoever is controlling is likely going to be the God of Purgatorio. Since we've had the God of Paradiso, the God of Inferno, and the God of Chaos, it'll be so cool to reveal that the God of Purgatorio has been watching this entire time, and quite metaphorically speaking, only reveals themselves after the three realities have joined. Well, being invisible is kind of their theme. I have a feeling that they will have some sort of shape-shifting ability, as well as some invisibility, so expect some sort of taboo-like being who's just been watching us all this time. Can you imagine Radan, after picking up these Magatama charms, realizing that the God of Purgatorio has awakened and this is what triggers him to fight at his full potential. Keep in mind the God of Purgatorio is not the same as the God of Chaos since that was the Earth's realm that Aesir ruled over. Purgatorio, a lot of you know, is the realm that doesn't affect the Earth or the human realm. So it makes quite sense that if the Trinity of Realities have formed, the new God who's been there all this time can seek to take over possibly the multiverse. Purgatorio is also evident in Radan's Gates of Hellbar, and I have to say he warned our Bayonetta that the calamity was inevitable, that Paradiso and Inferno were going to come for each other's throats. What if this was a whole foreshadowing of the coming of Purgatorio? And I think that would be a huge twist that there was a threat 
that just went over our heads. But Radan is fully aware of it. Maybe he has some sort of history with the God of Purgatorio in the past and possibly a reason why he has the Tomoe emblem. I personally don't want an us versus God again since we've been doing that for the past three days. I feel there should be a little more friendship politics that should happen with more humanoid battles, but I would still play the game regardless. So if we were to take out the us versus God cliche, it would be awesome to see another human who's exceeded that of Umbran Witches and Lumen Sages, who is now weaponizing the Forsaken Souls. But going back, imagine if this god was ripped out of the pages of prehistory, and this is how Luca can be introduced again. Or that this god of Purgatorio has had this master plan all along since the very start, and purposely erased his own history. Let me know who you think these MILFs and the masterminds are in the comments below. I'll be reading every single one of them, and who knows, you might be featured in one of the next videos. Remember, I have over 80 more Bayonetta 3 theories. Remember to like the video, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you do not miss your daily dose of Bayonetta 3. Stay safe, Minasan. I'm Rakun, and never get disheartened.